Welcome everyone. I'm Jerry Savelle. Thank you for joining with me today. We've been talking about the year of the abundant harvest. For those of you who've been watching the last several weeks, you know that we have been dealing with this subject in depth, and I praise God that we have the opportunity to share it with you. And I trust that those of you that have been watching faithfully, something is happening on the inside of you. You're receiving revelation. You're receiving insight. And as you begin to appropriate it and apply it, you're going to find out that God will make it happen for you just like He does it for me or anybody else who is a faithful doer of the Word. So this is the year of the abundant harvest. Say it with me. This is my year for the abundant harvest. Now once again, we know that abundant harvest comes when we are faithful, when we're diligent, and when we're consistent in our sowing. So if you're a sower and you're diligent and faithful and consistent in it, then you have every right to expect abundant harvest. And this can be the year that it begins to take place in your life like never before. Let me, let me read this before we go to the uh, conference I was teaching this in. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 from the Message Translation says, God can pour on the blessings in astonishing ways. I want I want you to begin to expect that. I want you to begin to expect your harvest coming back to you, not in ways that you can think of, because God is able to do exceeding abundant above all that we can ask or think. So begin to say, God, you're going to pour out blessings in my life in astonishing ways. I'm going to see my harvest come this year in ways that I've never experienced before. You start saying that, start expecting that, and you just watch. God's going to make it happen. Now let's go back into the conference where I was teaching on this subject. And when we finish, I'll be back in just a few moments with some closing remarks. Last week, I went back to Shreveport, Louisiana, where Carol and I grew up. And we were filming because it's my 50th anniversary. And uh, I sat in the very seat where I sat that night that Kenneth Copeland said all those things. And then I told the story. They're filming it. And then... He came back a second time. Now, by this second time, I've surrendered my life to the Lord. And I'm preparing for ministry. I've even been out doing some youth meetings here and there and so forth. And I'm ministering to young people and hippies and drug addicts and all in my city. And so he came back the second time. And the second time he came, and I sat in a different seat, because that first time I'm on the back row, can hardly wait to get out. By the time he came back the second time, I had moved up to the front, front row. I'm a front row Christian now. <laughs> I could hardly wait to hear what he had to say. And uh, he began to prophesy over me. Now, I'll take it back. I sat on the third row about where Billy Rash is sitting right there. And Brother Copeland's preached along there, and then he just stopped. He said, Jerry, stand up. So I stood up. I didn't have a clue what he's going to do or say. He said, I was in prayer today, and God showed me that you and I will be a team. And we will spend the rest of our lives together preaching the Word of God all over the world. And it will be your responsibility to believe God for the perfect timing for the team to begin. Sit down. <laughs> I leaned over to Carol and I said, what did all that mean? She said, I think we're moving to Fort Worth, Texas. <laughs> I said, what do you mean by a team? She said, I think you're going to wind up preaching with Kenneth Copeland. I thought, wow, that was awesome. You know? So, you know, we didn't move right away. And uh, now I'm out, you know, preaching here and there. And then he came back a third time. And uh, we, we had an opportunity to get a little better acquainted. And then I'm in Oklahoma City. And he's in, headed to Jacksonville, Florida. And he calls my house and says, where's Jerry? And Carolyn said he's in Oklahoma City. When's he coming home? He'll be home tonight. Tell him to meet me in Jacksonville Beach, Florida. So we drove down to Jacksonville Beach, Florida. And that's when the team began. Now, I'm in Shreveport last week telling all these stories, filming it, and I'm sitting in the very seats where all this happened. And boy, did it bring back some fond memories. Terry, you were there a couple of times. I remember Terry just when she's about 11 years old coming. And uh, uh, it brought back some great memories. Now, what I'm saying is this. He prophesied that he and I would be a team. Well, I could have 
took that and just said, well, that's not likely. How could that ever happen? But we've been a team now for almost 50 years. What two preachers you know today have that kind of relationship? Amen. In fact, the Lord told me when Carol and I were in Australia in March, he said, when you get home, you call Brother Copeland and tell him 2019 will be your 50th year in the ministry and you go back to your roots and tell him you're going to go back and serve him and go wherever he wants you to go and do whatever he wants you to do and tell him and wherever you go with him, tell him it's a seed. You don't want to be paid for it. You're just going to go back to your roots and the team is hooking up again. Now we've been preaching together all these years, but I'm, I'm going back to be with him like I was in those early days. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh yeah, there it is. That's the very seat I was sitting on when uh, Kenneth Copeland came the very first time. Amen. So what I'm, what I'm endeavoring to emphasize is Every word inspired by God that he has prophesied over me has come to pass. So why would I not choose to believe when the prophet says 2019 will be a year of abundant harvest? I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be standing in this place if his word couldn't be depended upon. It was a decreed word from God that created an appointed time, a due season. Can you say amen? amen. Now, I'm going to wrap it up with this. Two years ago, 2017, Brother Copeland was really, he'd, he'd really got settled on uh, uh, the the international jet that he believed God wanted him to have. And of course, Jesse and I and some others that was introduced this morning were on the board, you know, and, and he informs us of all this and so forth. And so we went out to the airport to look at this airplane and uh, he was still praying about it afterwards, hadn't made any final decision at that point. And so I was led of the Lord because the airplane that I uh, currently own uh, it won't take me internationally. And uh, I spend more time internationally than most preachers who do have international jets. In fact, actually, I go internationally more than Brother Copeland. I go more than Brother Jesse. I've been traveling internationally for 41 of my 50 years. I have offices in a number of different nations, Bible schools, churches, staff. And so if anybody needed an international jet, it's Jerry Savelle. <laughs> I've paid my dues. I haven't complained <laughs> when I've got on American Airlines or any other of these airlines. I've been obedient to God, but I knew that one day this is not the way I'm going to spend the rest of my life traveling around the world. Yeah. I was willing to do it. I paid my dues. haven't complained. <laughs> I'm not better than anybody else. But God told me when I first went to ministry, you will not be able to fulfill what you're called to do without airplanes. Yeah. And then he added this, and don't you ever fly an airplane that's got debt on it. I want you to believe God, believe me for debt-free airplanes. So I'm not done yet. And it seems like the international thing has even picked up more. So if there was anybody that ever needed and the right time for an international jet, it'd be Jerry Savelle and the time is now. Amen. 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 Now, I was led of the Lord in 2017 because I know Brother Copeland knows how to believe for debt-free airplanes. So I was led of the Lord to sow $100,000 into the airplane that he was believing for. So I sowed $100,000. And uh, 
And then last year, no, that, that was early part of 2017. And then in August of 2017, during the Believers Convention here in Fort Worth, I was led of the Lord on Thursday night after I preached to sow another quarter of a million dollars into his international jet. So that's $350,000 just in that one project. Now I've sowed seed in, in other people's international jets. And I've been believing for mine. Amen. It's time. Amen. I said, it's time. I, I'm not done. When, when I, I had that stroke, a full blown stroke, I couldn't, I lost use of my right arm, lost use of my right leg partially, uh, total memory loss. Didn't even know my family. Couldn't think of one scripture, one sermon I'd ever preached. Couldn't recognize anybody. They'd put a child's coloring book in front of me and tell me, what is that? Point at pictures of leaves and birds and dogs. I didn't have a clue what they were. Total memory loss. And God supernaturally healed me. Do I look like a man who had a full-blown stroke? Supernaturally healed me. And within three weeks, I was traveling around the world again, praise God. And I hadn't let up since. Carolyn says, is this what you call slowing down? I just turned 72 and I feel like I'm 42. I've been hanging around Copeland. <laughs> Brother Copeland. Amen. And it's picked up. There's more demand on me internationally today than ever. So it's not just because I'm on, a, I'm on an international airplane. I'm not trying to show off. It's a tool. Amen. And so I've sold $350,000 into his airplane. Now he's flat it. And when I heard the word decreed, out of the mouth of the prophet that 2019 is the year of the abundant harvest. I began to shout. I said, I began to shout. And I'm saying without any, without any reservation, without any reluctancy, without any fear, this is the year my international jet will manifest. Hallelujah. If it's the year of the abundant harvest, why not? And I believe I'm this close. Hallelujah. Now, if you believe it, and I learned this a long time ago, if you believe it, then you have to act like it. Faith without corresponding actions is void of power. So the very first airplane God blessed me with back in 1975. That was nine debt-free airplanes ago. The Lord asked me one day, do you really believe you have an airplane? I said, yes, I do. He said, why aren't you acting like it? I said, well, Lord, how does one act like he has an airplane? Go get out on the runway? I mean, <laughs> how do you act like you have an airplane? He said, well, you could accept more of the invitations that you've been turning down because I was driving everywhere. And he said, you could accept all the invitations that you've been turning down. I said, well, Lord, they want me in Los Angeles one night and they want me in Miami the next. You can't drive there and get to those meetings on time. He said, then go ahead and set up your itinerary as though you can. So the man that handled my scheduling back then, I said, Charles, you write back and accept every invitation that comes into this office. Book me up so tight, there's absolutely no way I can drive. He looked at me and he thought, dear Lord, are you serious? I said, yes. And he did. And so I thought, well, I got to schedule now. Zowie. You would think an airplane would show up that night. It didn't. 
Now I got to fulfill all this because I'm not in the habit of breaking commitments. So I had to, you know, back then it was Love Field. I had to go over to Love Field, Dallas, and fly as far as I could because some of the cities I accepted invitations to didn't even have airports. And I'd have to rent a car and drive somewhere, you know. And so, man, it was day and night, day and night. I'd come home two o'clock in the morning, go in and kiss my wife, kiss my daughters, drop that suitcase off, get another one, and head out just to make all these meetings. I said, Lord, you told me I needed to act like I had an airplane. I did. Where's the airplane? He said, well, son, where are you going to keep it? You can't keep it at your house. I said, no, I'm going to keep it at the airport. He said, do you have a hangar? I said, well, no. He said, well, why don't you have a hangar? I said, well, I'm waiting on the airplane. I, he said, I thought you said you believed you had an airplane. I said, I do. He said, well, where are you going to keep it? I said, at the airport in a hangar. Do you have a hangar? I said, no. He said, why not? I said, well, I'm waiting for the airplane to manifest. He said, I thought you said you had an airplane. You don't argue with God. You're going to lose. So I went out to Meacham Field. I'd never been out to Meacham Field. Well, I'll take it back. I'd been out there with Brother Copeland, but I didn't know anybody out there. I didn't know where you could even, where you'd even talk to people about a hangar. So they, one person directed me here and there. And I finally got up to this guy that rented hangars. I said, sir, I need a hangar. He said, fill out an application. Jerry Seville, Jerry Seville Ministries. Put the address, put the phone number. What type aircraft? Blank. In number, blank. Type of airplane, blank. Single, twin, multi, you know, turbo, jet, blank. Then I signed it and gave it back to him. He said, you didn't fill out the application totally. I said, I put in there all anew. He said, well, what kind of airplane do you have? I said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, you don't know what kind of airplane you have? I said, no, sir, I don't. He said, uh, do you own it? I said, oh yeah, I own it. <laughs> but you don't even know what kind it is? I said, no, sir, I don't. He said, well, is it single engine, twin engine, turbo, jet? I said, I don't have a clue. He said, you actually own this airplane? I said, yes, I do. <laughs> Faith is the title deed. <laughs> well, he, he, I'm not getting anywhere with him. And he says, sir, we don't rent hangers out to people that don't know what kind of airplane they have. <laughs> not only that, there's a waiting list. And even if you knew what kind of airplane you had, I can't give you a hanger today. I said, I got to have one today. He said, there's a waiting list. I said, I can't wait. He said, why not? I said, God told me to come and get a hanger. God told you? I said, yes. God told me. He said, uh, well, does God know what kind of airplane you have? <laughs> I said, I believe he does, but he hasn't told me yet. He said, well, sir, why don't you come back when you know what God knows and we'll give you a hanger. <laughs> but you'll have to be on a waiting list. I said, sir, that won't work. You have to give me a hanger today. He said, I can't give you a hanger today. There are people who know what kind of airplane they have that are waiting <laughs> for a hanger. He got up to, you know, shake hands with me and dismiss me. So I took my little New Testament and read some scriptures to him about faith and all, and he still didn't get it. And I said, uh, okay, I'm leaving. But can you live with the fact that if you die and go to heaven and God asks you, why didn't you give Jerry Savelle a hanger? And you prevented me from getting an airplane because you wouldn't give me a hanger. Can you live with that? He said, no, sir, I'm going to give you mine. Sign right here. <laughs> he gave me his hanger, George. And within two weeks, my first airplane manifested debt-free. Hallelujah. Amen. So I brought up that story to tell you this one. I keep my airplane out at Spinks on the south side of Fort Worth. I was the first jet that ever was housed on that airport when they began to expand. It used to be Oak Grove 
where Brother Copeland had his first airplane many years ago. Then they expanded it and they turned it into Spinks because it's named after Happy Spinks, uh, the guy that was involved in aviation there. And I was the first jet years ago on that airport. And they took my jet as leverage to go to the city to get more money to expand the airport. Then they started building hangars out there. Well, for a season, I had my plane out here at, at Brother Copeland's hangar. And uh, then when he got the, the G5, uh, somebody's airplane had to go. <laughs> and rather than they forced me out, I volunteered. And I knew it was coming, you know, when it had to make room for that. So I moved my plane back to Speaks. And the day that we decided to do that, a hangar opened for me. Now, I've been telling them, and I'm telling them even stronger now because they've been hearing me say for quite some time now, I will have a Falcon 50 EX here. I will house a Falcon 50 EX here. They don't have a hangar big enough to hold a Falcon 50. So, they're building one. Okay. I'm making provision. Amen? Isn't that the way you do it, Bill? You make provision for what you believe is coming to pass. So they're building a huge hangar, and they have assured me that half of that hangar will be mine. Hallelujah. Well, they better get it built soon, because 2019 is the year of the abundant harvest. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Amen. If you believe it, stand to your feet and give your best shout to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, God is working on something. And I believe it involves my harvest. I'm making provision for abundant harvest this year in the name of Jesus. I believe I receive it. I receive it. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, give the Lord another good shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The decreed time has been spoken. So let's run with it. Can you say amen? amen. Let's run with it. And let me just close it with this. If what I just preached is from the Bible and I showed you where it is, then I would strongly urge you to get all the seed in the ground this year that you possibly can. Amen. Amen. Get all the seed in the ground this year that you possibly can and rejoice every time you sow it and decree this is my year for the abundant harvest. Come on, give the Lord one more good praise. Hallelujah. Come on up. Are you ready to receive the abundant harvest that God has promised? In the powerful three CD series, Year of the Abundant Harvest, Jerry Savell demonstrates with scripture how harvest time is decreed through prophecy, how God never forgets a seed sown, how the abundant harvest enables you to be an abundant giver and more. You can live every day in God's blessing. Also included in today's package is the inspiring book, Every Day a Blessing Day. In its pages, you will learn what the blessing of God is and how you were created to prosper and excel. Today is the day. Call or go online to jerrysavelle.org and request this life-changing package, including Year of the Abundant Harvest and Every Day a Blessing Day. You can take your faith to the next level. Make the decision now to become a doer of the word and watch how God will produce an abundant harvest in your life. Well, I hope you're shouting right where you're sitting or standing. In fact, I hope you're standing because you enjoyed the Word so much today and it has blessed you and inspired you. And listen, 
Once again, I keep saying this, but I'm going to say it again and again. God is no respecter of persons. He will make it happen for you just like He has for me or anybody else who is faithful to do His Word. God wants you to have abundant harvest this year. You know, the reason why you want to have abundant harvest or the reason why you should want to have abundant harvest is so that your life will be better, but not just that. It's so that you will be in position to help other people get their lives better. You know, Carol and I made a decision many, many years ago, in fact, 50 years ago, that when the blessings of God begin to come on us and overtake us, like Deuteronomy chapter 28 says, then we made a decision that we were going to become a clearinghouse for the blessings of God. We wanted to be blessed to be a blessing. And that's what we've endeavored to do all these years. And it takes abundant harvest to be able to do that. I keep remembering in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 where it says, God will not only bless uh, you for sowing, but He will also increase your resources for sowing. And that's what we believe God for all these years. Lord, increase our resources for sowing. You know you can trust us. We won't hoard it up. We'll be a distribution center. We'll be a clearinghouse, and we'll bless other people. And that's the reason why I believe God has blessed us as He has. And once again, He'll do the same thing for you. Now, if you want to continue your study on this subject, the year of the abundant harvest, we have put together three CDs by the same title, The Year of the Abundant Harvest. These are messages that I preach at Eagle Mountain Church, at our church here in Crowley, Texas, Heritage of Faith Christian Center, also in Brother Copeland's Believers, or rather Brother Copeland's Ministers Conference that was conducted not too long ago. And these three messages are full of the Word, and I believe they are faith-building and faith-inspiring. So if you'd like to have those three CDs, along with my book, Every Day of Blessing Day, this is our package for this week. And in fact, it'll be the last week that we offer it during this time. So if you want it, you need to place your order right away. Go on our website, jerrysavelle.org, and it'll give you all the instructions on how to place your order. And once again, we'll do our best to get it to you as quickly as we possibly can. I want to thank all of my partners for helping me uh, spread the Word through television and other means all over the world. You are such a blessing to us. And those of you that uh, maybe have been praying about becoming a partner and you don't know how, go on the website, just look under partnership and it will show you how. I pray for all my partners, I pray for our friends right now that this year will indeed be your year of the abundant harvest. I'm also praying that it will be a year that you will experience marvels, wonders and extraordinary manifestations of the greatness of our God. Please also consider staying connected with us through Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all the other forms of social media. It's there to help you. We want to stay in contact with you and share with you what we've learned from the Word of God that we know will make a winner out of you just like it has us. And don't forget, your faith will overcome the world.